I'll figure out what the numbers are after I when I get on the rail cam later. This would be a good place to just stop and do what you gotta do. I know, but for me, this would be. Even over here, like that little those little parking spaces back here. Two two bullet holes on the top. It looks like they used a pump shotgun on that thing. No, it was a pistol shot. Hmm. Well, a shotgun would be a whole bunch of little holes. Little, uh, little dents. Apparently I drank her soda. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's alright. We'll figure something out. DPUs. Alright, the train is just about done. A few more cars left. Never mind, there's bear tables. Never mind. Oh, never mind, still going, still going. Those things are really hard to see from a far sight. It almost looks like it almost looks like there's nothing. But as long as the rear crossing you're standing near still ended. now the train ended. Four engines on it. Six point fifty five inch model next year, probably at hundred to two hundred dollars more than the IP Pro Max. So expect thirteen hundred to four engine train again. And then the following year five. they'll release the bigger variant at one hundred dollars more. And then a few years from now, the other iPhone models will also get a price bump. Once again, repeating the iPhone 10 moment that eventually led to the entire smartphone industry bringing their prices. Down. Twenty six eighty three. To justify this price increase, they just cannot make it only thinner, right? They need to do sixty two eighties on this one. And of course, we do have some other notable upgrades here too. For example, the Face ID camera is rumored to now be placed under the display, something that we've been hearing for many years now. But only the front camera remaining visible and likely the same size as the dynamic island is right now in height in order to make it easy for developers to keep that same dynamic island functionality as now. This front camera is also set to be upgraded to a brand new 24 megapixel sensor with a 6 element lens from the current 12 megapixel with a 5 element lens that we've got on the 15s. Also, this year, we're getting that new 48 megapixel ultrawide. And then next year, we're set to be getting a new 48 megapixel telephoto too. Which means that if this iPhone 17 Slim is getting a 24 megapixel front camera too, then all the photos will be taken at a default resolution of 24 megapixels, no matter which lens you use, giving you a much sharper image. So that's the front. Now, the back is also getting some big changes. As we all know, ever since the iPhone 11 Pros, the camera module design hasn't really changed at all. It only got bigger. The standard iPhone 16s are getting a new camera design this year, but the 16 Pros are not. So this high-end iPhone 17 model is set to finally be changing that by possibly having the camera in the top center. Essentially the same approach that Google has taken with their Pixel phones, which does make a lot of sense. Think about it. 
Apple is making this iPhone 17 model significantly thinner. Unless they give it a potato camera, the camera bump would stick out even more. And a 34 millimeter stick on the 8.25 millimeter iPhone 15 Pro Max. If Apple were to decrease the thickness of the iPhone to 5.25 millimeters, then the camera module would increase by at least three to a total of seven, possibly even more uh, with that new larger main sensor that's been proven. The iPhone already wobbles significantly when it's sitting flat on the table. This new version will just wobble like crazy. Unless, of course, they put a camera modules in the middle. Then, it can immediately solve this issue while also giving the iPhone a brand new look too. Additionally, we're expecting some even more upgrades. We could see up to 12 gigabytes of RAM from the current 8. Uh, Jeff Boo states 8 only for the slim model and then 12 for the pro models. Although, I would expect the slim or ultra to have, you know, at least 12 as it is going to be more expensive than the pros. As for any other new features, there's also to be a new anti-reflective coating for the display. Possibly something similar to what Samsung has done with the S24 Ultra, which was great as it significantly reduced reflections without giving us that grainy texture that we got uh, on the nano texture display of the iPad Pro, for example. And this glass is also to be more durable, although it isn't quite clear yet if this will just be on the iPhone 17 Slim slash Ultra or on the other Pro models as well. We're also getting Wi-Fi 7 with up to 40 gigabit per second speeds, four times higher than Wi-Fi 6C. And literally the same speeds as Thunderbolt. Obviously in practice these will be far lower, but still fairly impressive tech. And I do believe that Wi-Fi 7, by the way, will be coming to the other iPhone 17 models, at least the Pro models, um, as Wi-Fi is integrated into the main chip itself. And of course, given that this is an entirely new generation of iPhones, we are likely going to see some fresh new colors too. The ones that we designed are gold, silver, tungsten, and sapphire. But sapphire looking especially gorgeous. Hey guys, Dantix here. This is the perfect outpost. Well, this will help you build your perfect outpost. You see, in this